Hello, and welcome to the final presentation for the Distributed Electric Propulsion Black Team. Presented by Lucas Cavalcante. My name is Nicholas Loveland. I worked on the battery and power and general aircraft design. I'm Sean Reagan, and I worked on fuselage and material design. I'm Adam Rosman. I was project manager and worked on landing gear design. I'm Matthew Smith, and I worked on propulsion of the aircraft. I'm Jordan Winchell, and I worked on wing design. The goals of this project were to design a remote control aircraft with a propulsion system of more than six propellers spread across the wings, capable of runway and takeoff landing, a 15-minute flight time, and a thrust-to-weight ratio of at least 0.6 to 1. The broad impact of DEP technology is the exploration of short takeoff and landing vehicles, which have a reduced noise pollution and are more environmentally friendly than conventional aircraft, and the potential for air taxi vehicles like the Joby S4 pictured above. The testing and analysis plans for the project consisted of hand performance calculations, finite elements analysis, computational fluid dynamics, and bench testing prior to flight. The fuselage of the craft is comprised of a hardwood maple dowel running through its entire length. The nose is a two-sided pyramid forming into a square cross-section body. The main body of the craft is an 8-inch long 3D printed PLA plastic design, including the wing mounting bracket and the housing for the battery. The tail section of the fuselage includes a 16-inch converging square cross-section structure, leading it to the 4-inch long tail stabilizer mounting section. Two hardwood maple dowels per wing were used as structural spars. They mount in holes designed in a 3D printed body. 18 Clark Y balsa wood airfoil brackets run along the wing's length. Three of the spars are cut short to leave room for the wing's ailerons. The trailing edge is comprised of triangular balsa wood blocks fitting in between each airfoil bracket. The ailerons are larger triangular balsa wood blocks, 13 inches in length. The leading edge of the wings is comprised of an alternating pattern of thin balsa wood sticks and 3D printed PLA plastic motor mounting brackets. The eight motors mount directly to the motor mounting brackets using the provided screws. The two horizontal stabilizers are quarter inch balsa wood plates mounted directly to the top of the stabilizer mounting section of the fuselage. The elevators are made of quarter inch balsa wood as well, attached to the stabilizers using plastic hinges. The vertical stabilizer, as well as the rudder, are also made of quarter inch balsa wood plates mounted directly on top of the horizontal stabilizers and attached using the same plastic hinges. To control the elevators, two servos are mounted halfway up the converging tail section, with their arms sticking out either side of the craft through slits cut through the balsa wood walls. The servo arms are connected to the plastic moment horns attached to the elevators with push-pull rods. As the servos rotate, the rods push and pull the horns and the elevators deflect up and down. The control for the rudder is very similar to the elevators. A servo is mounted in the tail stabilizer mounting section of the fuselage, and a control arm is run from the servo's arm to a moment horn on the rudder. As the servo rotates, the rod pushes and pulls the horn, and the rudder deflects left and right. Both of the ailerons are controlled by a single servo mounted in the main body of the craft. The servo has a double arm attached to it, and is connected to torque rods running through the wings to the ailerons by push-pull rods. As one side of the double arm servo rotates away, the other rotates forward, creating an opposite rotation in each of the torque arms. The torque arms are directly attached to the ailerons, so as they rotate in opposite directions, the ailerons do as well. Finally, the landing gear is a tailwheel style setup, with two large foam wheels screwed in just in front of the main body of the craft, and a single nail sticking out of the bottom of the fuselage in the back to act as a sort of skid for the craft during takeoff and landing. Here's our first iteration estimated lift calculations. Making basic assumptions, we did hand calculations to find the estimated lift from the aircraft. The lift value is found to be about 25 newtons. From here, we found takeoff velocity and stall velocity. Then using these estimations, it was concluded that flight was possible with our current wing sizing. In order to estimate the thrust of the aircraft, we uh, used an experimental formula seen here on the right. The variables we used was a weight of an aircraft of 25 newtons. We're gonna be using eight propellers, a uh, propeller diameter of 6 inches with a pitch of 4 inches and an angular velocity of 13,000 RPMs. Plugging those numbers back into the formula, we got a static thrust of about 27 newtons, which gave us a, a 1.08 thrust to weight ratio. Uh, from this data, it was assumed there would be sufficient thrust for takeoff. Uh, comparing that data to um, three different motors to choose the motor, we outlined the speci specifications above. In the end, the Cobra C 220440 was chosen because it was the lightest motor out of all three. It offered sufficient thrust for flight and had the lowest percent error when compared to the estimated thrust calculation. For the tail sizing, we used the volume ratio method in order to approximate the dimensions of the tail. 
We wanted a relatively stable aircraft, so we used a horizontal volume ratio of 0 0.8 and a vertical volume ratio of 0 0.08, which resulted in the following dimensions on the screen. We then took a pitch moment equilibrium in order to determine the angle of incidence of the horizontal stabilizer, which came out to be 2 degrees. This was neglected as it would prove to complicate the build. We conducted finite element analysis using ANSYS Mechanical to ensure our wing design was structurally sound. The two lower images show the von Mises equivalent stress in flight, as well as a close-up of the maximum stress, while the smaller image above shows an exaggerated view of the wing deflection. We calculated stability derivatives, namely longitudinal static stability, to ensure our aircraft maintains steady flight. A negative CM alpha requires our center of gravity to be ahead of our aerodynamic center and is needed for an aircraft to tend towards equilibrium if pitched up or down. Pictured above is the result of a computational fluid dynamics model run in SimCenter Star CCM Plus for the propeller wing interaction in 3D and the 2D cross section displaying the flow behavior around the wing. Reversal is evident along the top wing surface. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the wing at a 3 meters per second incidence velocity and 10 degree angle of attack with and without propellers. Note the increased pressure distribution along the bottom of the wing modeled with propellers on the right. As seen in the chart above, the propellers have the greatest lift improvement at low velocity and low angle of attack, that almost double of the case without propellers. This demonstrates the benefit in reduced time and runway distance required to take off for DEP-equipped vehicles. A simulation of the full aircraft was also done. Since we were mainly worried with the pitching moments of the aircraft, we only meshed half of the airplane as it is symmetric about the pitching plane. Data from the CFD simulation was pulled, such as the drag forces and also the sensor pressure, in order to perform different calculations such as the stability derivative and climb rates. This is the XFLR5 wing CFD. Single wing analysis was done at multiple velocities at 10 meters per second, 12 meters per second, and 28 meters per second. Using the pressure gradients along the cord length, we were allowed for lift analysis to be done. The single wing lift was found to be roughly 3.7 newtons at 10 meters per second and about seven newtons at 12 meters per second. This allowed for the team to make decisions on the velocity needed to obtain a sufficient flight. We dug deeper into aircraft CFD with using ANSYS. Here we updated the model into ANSYS, ran a CFD at takeoff parameters. Below shows the streamlined velocity and how the aircraft would interact with flow. And then the simulation proves that the aircraft will produce roughly 22 newtons of lift at takeoff. When the motors first came in, we wanted to test what kind of max thrust we'd be getting. So we constructed three motor tests. Uh, the first test, we drew it into a plastic surface. And uh, the problem with this, there wasn't enough space underneath the motor to create enough thrust. Along with this, was very unstable during the testing. Uh, to, to fix the space under the motor, we attached it to the end of a plunger, but it was still too unstable and it was uh, moving off center line during the test. To fix this, we drilled the plunger into a wooden plate and that helped with stability and fixed the problem where there wasn't enough space under the, underneath the motor. Comparing these two, uh, these three tests, we can see test one got a thrust to weight of 0.76, test two got a thrust to weight of 1.00, and test three got a thrust to weight of 1.1. You can compare it to the manufacturer's max thrust at the blue star there, and that is at 360 grams, and test three was getting around 348 grams. So the numbers were close enough and we decided to move forward. Our craft successfully took off did a couple of low passes and to call it safe we landed it because that was so successful we decided to take off again and try our hand at aerobatics here's us flying upside down here's a full corkscrew here's our first attempt at a loop and here was a little freestyle barrel roll thing and finally a relatively soft landing this concludes our showcase for the distributed electric propulsion aircraft. We hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun designing and manufacturing it. Uh, thank you for your time.